Okay team, exercise number six in our nine exercise progression for fixing a chest cave. When you're squatting, we've restored mobility in the rest of the spine so that that extra stress isn't put on the middle of the back. We've taught our hamstrings how to turn on both on the ground and on the wall. We've taught our abs how to turn on, stay on under some load during our rocking exercise. We even started to get us into more of a squat pattern with the backwards bear crawl and with the wall supported squat. Now, the next one that I want to do, I want to teach you how to get into your hip, how to really load your hip. Oftentimes what happens is with this tight back that we have, we only know how to load our back when we squat. We don't know how to well, we know how to load our back when we squat. We don't know how to shift back when we squat. Hopefully that visual helped a little bit more than me just saying that. Um, so the first progression into loading the hip a little bit more is we're gonna teach you how to load one side at a time. So we're gonna do a split squat. So one leg forward, one leg back. I'm even gonna turn a little bit more like this. Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to do a normal split squat but I want you to take your opposite hand, reach around, and tap the outside of your heel, just like that. Okay, so we come on down here. I wanna to try to keep my hip tuck. Ooh, I feel a little stretch there, that's cool. Hang on to my hip tuck. And keep looking forward. So making sure a big thing that'll happen is the foot will try to roll out that front foot as I reach around. I want you to keep that foot down so that you're loading your hip rather than just bending your ankle outward like this. Okay, so we're holding here. My foot's pretty stable. And good, okay? Do about 10 flip sides, do the other side. You're gonna feel Usually that one is easier than the other. Keep pushing through, big things to think about. Make sure that foot stays flat. Make sure you're getting your target. You're reaching all the way around to the outside of your heel, not just the outside of your angle. It's much harder to get down to your heel. And if you find it very difficult, make sure you exhale as you come down or as you're setting up to get all the air out of the way. Because if I, I try to hold too much air, I just compress that air inside my body, right? And there's not as much room for me to move around. So pressurized air can lift a car, correct? So what we need to do is we need to teach you how to move around, how to be stable without all that air pressure that we need. Um, taking a big breath during your squat can help, but there is such thing as doing it too much. So you gotta find this nice balance. If you're having a chest cave and you're taking big breaths in, you probably don't need more air. You might need less because you might need a more um, general rule. Going all in one direction is usually wrong, <laughs> okay? So keeping your chest up is a common cue that we'll give in the squat, especially as the chest is caving. Um, what I've noticed is that people keep their chest way up. They reverse their spinal curve. So my thoracic spine gets really flat. My lumbar spine rounds out. And then as I squat, I lose motion. So I just don't have any more mobility left because I've driven my chest up so far. And what happens is then they'll break at the middle of their back. They'll try to get back to some semblance of normalcy but everything's all torqued and jacked up and all that stuff. So what I need you to do is learn how to stay in the, some sort of a happy medium, right? You don't want to crank way up. You don't want to crunch way down. You want to be somewhere in between. And you're going to kind of have to trial and error through that to find out what position that is for you.